Hello, 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 everybody. Today we're going to be reading through Hosea, chapter 5, um, the failure of Israel's leaders. Um, I do have my cat, Mr. Gray, with me. Hey, Mr. Gray. Oh, he was talking to me just a little bit earlier on. Um, Anyways, uh, I invite you to grab your Bibles, open up to Hosea chapter 5, BibleGateway.com, or the Bible app, um, and uh, read along with me. Uh, but before we get to that, oh, and if you want a physical Bible, I'd love to hook you up with one. Uh, you know, let me know if that's something that interests you, and I'll try to hook you up with the Bible. Um, but uh, yeah, before we get to Hosea chapter 5, um, just talk a little bit about what's been going on so far. So Hosea has married a prostitute named Gomer, uh, has had three kids with them, uh, named after a great victory, named Unloved, and then named Not My People. And then by the end of the chapter, it was like, but now with this great victory from God, and after this time of exile, no longer will you carry around that title of unloved because you will be known as loved. No longer will you be called as not my people because you will be known as mine, my people. Um, and just that redemption that comes. Like even sometimes people are like, I've been cursed. I've been cursed even from birth. And I was like, yeah, you know what? God can even redeem that and he can restore you from that and I think that's really really cool and then it gets into his relationship with Gomer and Gomer chooses to leave the marriage and to pursue other relationships to provide for her the things that Hosea was providing and Hosea gets hurt and he's angry and he's grieving as God is grieving because the people of God have turned their back on him and have chosen to pursue other gods. And um, with that, though, that grieving and that hurt does not last nearly as long as that desire and that willingness to forgive and to redeem and to grow. And then we uh, got into um, just how passionate God's love and forgiveness is and how complete it is. Um, and then in transition from that relationship, like metaphor that's kind of mixing and weaving together Hosea and Israel to God directly talking to the people. I'm like, I don't want you to get this wrong. This isn't just about this marriage. This is about God and you people. Um, and talking to a lot of the religious leaders that were men, um, really called out the guys. He's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're blaming the women for turning to prostitution because you're not providing for them. And not only are you not providing for them and not protecting them, you're also purchasing them to be the prostitutes, enabling them to have a job. So you're blaming them for something that you're enabling them to do. Encouraging them to do, and you're angry at them. Stop pointing the finger over there and look at what you're doing. And there was also a major call uh, towards um, the religious leaders at the time. And, you know, as you are choosing not to follow me, Others are following you and you're leading them into the, your same sin. You're leading them away from me. And what you're doing, they are doing. And they are choosing to follow you instead of me. And as they're choosing to follow you instead of me, your punishment will become their punishment. As God is preparing the way into exile for the Israelite people. And we know this from our time when we read through the book of Kings and second Kings. This is taking place during that time, during um, I, King Jeroboam's reign, I should know that, but I forget. Uh, <laughs> and um, 
you know, so we know that it's coming, but then in this too, sprinkled all throughout it, is that idea that, yes, there's going to be this time when it's going to be really hard, but God has a plan to redeem and restore. Um, that's been what's been going through this. And, uh, you know, now we're going to be focusing no more, you know, things hidden or anything like that. We're going to be talking about the failure of Israel's leaders. And we spent a lot of time with that yesterday, too. Like, be careful with who you follow, right? And who you choose to follow. Are you following God? Are you following leaders that are following God? Are you following leaders that are following themselves? And, um, yeah. So, without further ado. Hosea, chapter 5. The failure of Israel's leaders. Starting at verse 1. Hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you leaders of Israel. Listen, you members of the royal family. Judgment has been handed down against you. For you have been led... Oh, hey, Gray. Sorry, that's not part of the Bible. Round. Round. Um, okay, he wants out of the room. I'm sorry. I'll restart this. And then he walks away from the door. Uh, sorry about that um so yeah let's just restart that because i was barely through verse one when he started uh, asking to be let out um hear this you priests pay attention you leaders of israel listen you members of the royal family judgment has been handed down against you for you have led my people into a snare by worshiping the idols of Mizpah and Tabor. You have dug a deep pit to trap them at the Akia Grove. I will settle with you for what you have done. I know what you are like, O Ephraim. You cannot hide yourself from me, O Israel. You have left me a As a prostitute leaves her husband, you are utterly defiled. Your deeds won't let you return to your God. You are a prostitute through and through, and you do not know the Lord. The arrogance of Israel testifies against her. Israel and Ephraim will stumble under their load of guilt. Judah, too, will fall with them. When they come with their flocks and herds to offer sacrifices to the Lord, they will not find him. Because he has withdrawn from them. They have betrayed the honor of the Lord, betraying children that are not his. Now their false religion will devour them along with their wealth. Sound the alarm alarm in Gibba. Blow the trumpet in Raham. Raise the battle cry in Beth Aven. Lead on into battle, O warriors of Benjamin. One thing is certain, Israel. On your day of punishment, you will become a heap of rubble. The leaders of Judah have become like thieves, so I will pour out my anger on them like a waterfall. The people of Israel will be crushed and broken by my judgment, because they are determined to worship idols. I will destroy Israel as a moth consumes wool. I will make Judah as weak as rotten wood. When Israel and Judah saw how sick they were, Israel turned to Assyria, to the great king there. But he 
could neither help nor cure them. I will be like a lion to Israel, like a strong young lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces. I will carry them off, and no one will be left to rescue them. Then I will return to my place until they admit their guilt and turn to me. For as soon as trouble comes, they will earnestly search for me. May God add a blessing to the reading of Hosea chapter 5. So, in this, there is a couple of things that really stood out to me. One, uh, that whole, like, as a prostitute leaves her husband, this is now really tying it together for those that were not clicking into the metaphor before. The relationship between Hosea and Gomer are intertwined. This is the metaphor. This is what is being represented. So, as God is saying this to the religious leader, and to the people of Israel, they can look at Hosea and they can see what him and Gomer have been going through. How their kids that were initially named unloved are now named loved, and those kids that were named, um, you know, um, not my people are now named their people. They see what's been going on with them. They see Hosea, Hosea's heart for redemption and forgiveness and to welcome Gomer back. But there was a period of time when he was angry and he was hurt and Gomer was off doing whatever she wanted with whomever she wanted. And this divide between them grew and grew and he returned back to his place until she was ready to turn back and be with him. And we see that's what's going on here. And as trouble comes up forward, like, Gomer got to a place where she was like, I was better off with my husband. Maybe, maybe he'll accept me back. And of course he did. These people, they've been slowly introducing these other gods. A lot of times through marriage. Um, you know, they, one king would come in and be like, yes, God is good, God is great, but... You know, let's also worship at this pole over here, and we'll worship this god over here. Let's uh, let's worship the god of Mizpah and the god of uh, Tabor, and you know, like these. Sorry, I have a like a itch. Um, so they would introduce these things, and they would, um, you know, introduce these gods into. The, uh, their kingdom, and they would worship them on equal footing as, you know, God. And God's like, no, those other gods are beneath me. They're not worthy of glory. They're not worthy of your honor. I am your God. And you have forgotten that. So you made your commitments to me. Now you've gone off with all these other gods while still acting like you're married to me. This isn't good. So, yeah, these things are going to happen. Literally getting kicked out of the land. And there's going to be, like, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain that's going to come with this. But when trouble comes around, you're going to remember who really loves you, who really cares for you. You're going to come back to me. But I'm not going to force you. I'm just going to allow these things to happen. And it's going to be hard. I'm going to allow these things to happen. And I am hurt. But I don't really take pleasure in these things happening to you. But I'm going to take credit for them. Because I'm not doing... I'm not going out there. I'm not doing these... I'm not forcing you to come back with me. But when trouble comes, you will come back to me because you're going to remember how good I really am. And I think that's one of those... I think that's the big takeaway from today. Yes, there are bad leaders. We need to choose who we follow and we need to choose who we follow carefully. 
so that their sins don't become our sins and their punishments don't become our punishments. But also that God is good. That we make choices or other people make choices around us that impact us. Whether, you know, wherever we're at. And when we're with God and those negative choices hurt us, we can turn to God for help and for his love and for his kindness, for his forgiveness, for his redemption. But when we start walking away from God and we start worshiping these other idols, we might notice that things aren't as good and that we put these other places and sought, you know, uh, validation and completion through these other gods and they will fall short. So the question I have, do you know that God is good? Oh, God is good. Do you trust that? Do you put your faith in that? I do. I do. The other thing is have you unintentionally or intentionally but most likely unintentionally let some other God some lesser God a stick that you're thinking is going to tell you the future. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that was talked about a little while ago. Fame, fortune, money, job, work, sex, things, materialism, clout, another God. Have these things entered into your life? and are sharing in the glory of God that is reserved for him. That's the question. So Lord, help us to know the answer. Because when we do things intentionally, that's one thing, but so often these things creep up unintentionally. Especially uh, with politics right now. Politics is the thing that so often we can let into that position in our heart or money and power and influence or whatever that is, Lord. We're so good at, at letting it bump you or share time with you or just be the only connection point between... You will only talk to you when it, we need help with money, power, politics, whatever. And that becomes our entire relationship with you and we lose sight on who you really are. So let all of that stuff become secondary and third dairy and let you become primary and help reveal to us when we've let those things take those places in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. May you be at the center. May all the glory and the honor go to you, Lord. All the glory and the honor to you, Lord. All the glory and honor to you, Lord. And help us to act justly. Help us to love mercy and help us to walk humbly with you, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, I am excited to continue through the book of Hosea and then get to one of the Gospels. And as, you know, the transitions are going and like we're we're pretty far into the Bible. We're we're getting close to reading the entire Bible like basically one chapter at a time. Um, and if there is a book of the Bible that I haven't read yet, and you know, you're like, Jeremy, I want to read through this with you. Um, you know, let me know. Uh, if you want to know what we've read through or not, 
go over to my YouTube channel if you're on Facebook, and if you're on YouTube, just go to the playlist. Everything's in a convenient playlist there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much once again. Have a fantastic day. God bless.